I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on Modular Arithmetic. The questions which I am going to discuss today in this particular video are very relevant for students taking competitive exams, especially multiple choice questions. We'll discuss many tricks and concepts of solving questions with high exponents. We'll understand basically what is modular arithmetic and then take up some examples to help the to help you understand the concepts in case you want to learn from me you can always send an email on the address given here we can actually have one-on-one -on -one classes and learn more in this video i'm going to discuss modular arithmetic we'll go through the basic concepts and relations We'll understand what does it mean by saying A is congruent to B mod N. We'll evaluate expressions related to mod operation. We'll find the unit place value, which actually is to find the mod of 10. We'll find the remainder when some numbers are multiplied and they are divided by some other number. We'll also figure out how to find the last digit of numbers like 567 to the power of 9. We'll also find remainder when the exponents are pretty high. We'll take up 3 to the power of 62 and see what is the remainder when it is divided by 17. Well, in short, modular arithmetic deals with numbers which are kind of cyclic, right? They repeat just as seasons repeat, so this is a very beautiful picture taken recently of the fall season, which we are going through. So we have four seasons and you know, every year they repeat. Seven days in a week, they repeat. So after, let us say the week starts with the working day Monday, then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, again, Monday comes. So this cyclic order, when represented as an integer is everything to deal with modular arithmetic. So let's really see how exactly it works. The best example is to see the clock itself and then understand what happens when it is past 12. Well, in hours, the numbers on the clock are written as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And after the 12th hour, again, it comes back to 1. Well, it could have been 13, but the numbers 1 to 12 repeat. And that is the kind of modular arithmetic which we are now interested in. So let's see, how do we work with such numbers? So basically, in modular arithmetic, it is the arithmetic of integers where the numbers wrap around on reaching a peak value, which we call as modulus. So in this particular case, the peak value is 12, right? So they wrap around, means after 12, they come back to the number one itself, right? The hour numbers on the clock are from one to 12. After 12, it get back to one or wraps around. So 13 is one. So 13 is equivalent to 1. Saying 13 is same as 1, correct? Or 17 is 5 and 23 is 11 on this clock, correct? In modular arithmetic, 23 is congruent to 11 modulus 12. Because 11 modular 20, 12 is minus 1, you can say, or is 11, right? Similarly, 23 is 1 less than 24. So it is just about to reach 12. So they have the similar position in this cyclic order of 12 numbers, correct? So that is what I think you got an idea. Modular arithmetic is about. So we can say 25 modulo 12 is 1 and also 13 modulo 12 is 1, right? So when it is 13 hours, our arm will be at 1 and when it is 25 hours, even then the position of the hour arm will be at 1. 
So this is a congruence modulo relation, right? And is written as 25 is congruent to 13 mod 12. Now this operator mod is slightly different. This mod, mod 12 is actually applied to both 25 and 13. When we write it on the side, it is not just for 13, correct? Mod 25, right? 25 mod 12 is same as 13 mod 12. Think like this, okay? So that is what it is. And both are equivalent to this, and their value in this case is just 1, correct? Now here, mod 12 is operated on both 25 and 13, just as I said, right? So in general, A mod N is the remainder obtained after dividing A by N. What does that mean? Well, if I divide 25 by 12, what do I get? Let us check this, right? So let us divide the number 25 by 12. So when I divide 25 by 12, 12 times 2 is 24, and we get a remainder, which is 1. Well, let us see what happens when I divide 13 by 12. Well, 13 divided by 12, one time, and the remainder is 1. So what do we notice? We see that the remainder is 1 in both the cases. So mod operator basically is the result. When you divide the number by the mod n, n number, right? So that remainder or the residual value is what we are interested in. So most of the time, we are always interested in the remainder or the residual value. Correct? Whenever we do A mod N, correct? In fact, mod N is in brackets, correct? So that treat this as an operator. It means A divided by N. And what is the remainder? That is the value of this expression, correct? Now, let's take an example here. What we have done is 51 mod 12, right? It can be calculated by finding the remainder when 51 is divided by 12, right? So 51 divided by 12, we know 12 times 4 is 48 plus 3. Remainder is 3, right? That gives you 51. So 51 mod 12 is actually equal to 3. You get the idea, right? So that is how we do it. Well, this operation of mod or modular arithmetic was very much developed in olden days in olden civilizations, especially in India, right? We had the Hindu lunar calendar. The reference here is given to you. Also, Aryabhatta was an excellent mathematician who did a lot of work on this. And his calendars, which are both lunar, solar calendars, linked all the planets, and those are still used in astronomy. So here are the references which you could check. Okay, let's continue. So we'll continue with some very basic examples of how do we calculate these mod numbers, right? We said these are integer values, right? So let us see what these integer values mean. Okay, so here is an example for us. Example 1, calculate mod n. A, evaluate the following integer values. Which of the following have the same value? Okay, let's begin with 21 mod 6. Now, how do we find 21 mod 6? So basically, we are going to divide 21 by 6 and check what is the remainder. Well, we know 6 times 3 is 18. And so, taking away 18 from 21 leaves a remainder of 3. So this is equal to 3. Is that clear to you? Now, let's do the next one, which is 60 mod 7. Well, we could do like this. We know that 7 times 8 is 56, right? Plus 4, correct? That will give us 60, correct? So that clearly means that in this particular case, 60 mod 7 is equal to 4, correct? So we can write this as 
60 mod 7. We are only interested in the remainder is 4. You get the idea. So let me write it on the right hand side as what we did. So we basically divided 60 by 7 and we know 7 times 8 is 56 and therefore we got a remainder 4 and that becomes the value. Now if I have a number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 mod 10, what is the value? Well, the value for this is the unit's place which is 7. Very simple. How do we get it? Well, you know that if I divide any number by 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, in this case, when you divide this by 10, you can do 10 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So you'll get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a 0. Remainder will be 7. So the ones place is the remainder. So notice here that we have the ones digit. Ones place, right? Okay. Now if I have to find mod 5, I have to divide by 5. So let's divide 129 by 5. So we can write 129 as dividing by 5, 5 times what? So when I divide by 5, 5 times 2 is... 10 and then 29, 5 times 5 is 25, remainder is again 4. So, well, that gives us the result as 4. So, these are the values for the expressions, correct? So, we have done part A, that is to evaluate each, well, it says integer values. Now, this is very interesting. We have given the positive values for each, right? Now, let us actually answer part B also, then I'll get back to the integer values. Since we see that these two values are equal, you could say that B and D gives you the same value, correct? So we can write down this answer as expression B and D. Okay, now let's look into the second half of it. Well, evaluate the following integer values. Well, you can see here that we could also do it like this. Let's go with one of them. Okay, so we have to divide 21 by 6, right? So we are dividing 21 by 6. If I write 4 here, 6 times 4 is 24. The remainder now will be what? Hmm. Could you do that? Yes, we could. And when you do that, you get minus 3 as your remainder. Correct? So, we could write this also as minus 3. So, this value of mod 6 of 21 is 3 or minus 3. Do you get the idea? Right? Let's do for mod 7. For 60, we know 7 times 9 is 63, right? And if you take away 3 in that case, you get 60. So it is minus 3 again. Now, for the last one, 7. And 10, take away 7, is 3. So that could also be written as minus 3. And in the last case, we have 5 and 4. So if I take away 4 from 5, then I could get my remainder. You get the idea, right? 130 is a multiple of 10. This is one less, one less. So minus one. So basically, when you calculate mod of n, you could get both positive and negative numbers. And therefore, we say it is the integer value, right? Which is always treated as a remainder. as shown here, correct? So I hope that makes sense. Now let's go and take up the next example, which is on application of mod n. The question here is, if today is Monday, find the day after 365 days. Hmm. You can always pause the video and answer the question. Well, in a week we have seven days, right? So weekdays repeat after seven days, and so modulo 7 can be applied to find the day of the week. So it is kind of a function which fits with our definition. After reaching 7, again the numbers repeat 1, 2, 7. You get the idea, right? So modulo 7 is the key to find the remainder. Hmm. We know 365 can be written as 7 times 52 plus 1. Basically, what we are doing here is we are dividing 365 by 7. 7 times 5 is 35. 
and what do we get here? We get 15, 7 times 2 is 14 and the remainder is 1. That is what we have written here. 365 can be written as 7 times 52 plus 1. So, what is mod 7 of 365? It is the remainder 1. So, we get the value of 1. 1 really means here a day after Monday. You get the idea. Day after Monday. Monday is the beginning, right? Now, therefore, after 365 days, the day will be one day after today. Since today is Monday, it is going to be Tuesday. You get an idea, right? So that is how we can easily answer this question. Now, let's dig deep into this particular concept of A congruent B mod N. First thing to remember is that this operator mod actually works on both A and B. It is not only on B, okay? This is very important to understand. And uh, we also want to say here that if I am dividing A by N, right? So basically, we are dividing this number A by N to get the remainder. Hmm? So what is the remainder when A gets divided by N? Correct? So we'll write A here and N. So N may go some quotient Q one time and then you'll get some number and ultimately we get a remainder R. Correct? Now when they are equal, in that case B divided by N will give us some different quotient. However, it will give the same remainder. That is kind of important. So when we say A is congruent to B when operator mod n is applied to a, that means we are looking for same remainder. Is that correct? Yes. So same remainder is the basic concept. Quotient can be different. And that is why I have the statement. If q1 and q2 are the quotients and r is the remainder, r is same for both a and b. In that case, by definition, a is equal to nq1 plus r and b is nq2 plus r, right? So now, if I do, because I'm saying a is congruent to b mod n, therefore r and r are same. Is that clear to you? Just because of that. And the value of this expression is also equal to r, right? So whenever I'm saying a is congruent to b mod n, we are actually looking at the remainder r, correct? That is the remainder. Now, if I do a minus b, in that case, what happens? This r and r cancel away, correct? r and r cancel away. So we are left with n times q1 minus q2. Well, q's are integers, right? So therefore, a minus b is an integer multiple of n, correct? It is a product of n. Clear. And so we know that if A is congruent to B mod N, in that case, A minus B is integer multiple of N. Clear? That's what it means. So we have learned two things by now. And first thing is that mod N is the operator which is applied on both A and B in this particular case when we write, then mod N of two numbers is equal only if their remainder is same, correct? Right? So let it be value R in this particular example. And third thing which we remember here is that if mod N of two numbers is equal, then the difference is integer multiple of N. Clear? Let's take a, an example to understand. Now, in this case, example 3, you need to show that 33 is congruent to 19 mod 7. So, let's see what is 33 mod 7. Now, to find 33 mod 7, basically, we have to find the remainder when 33 is divided by 7. So, 33 can be written as 7 times 4, which is 28 plus 5, 33, correct? 
So 33 mod 7 is basically equal to 5, the remainder. Clear? So it is always the remainder, which is the value of the function. Now 19. For 19 also, you can write 7 times 2 is 14, plus 5 as the remainder. And since we get the same remainder 5, that means they are congruent, right? So that is what we have written here. Since the remainder is 5, when both the numbers are divided by 7, the statement 33 congruent 19 mod 7 is true, right? So this is a true statement. Now this, we are calling this as our method number 1, right? There is a reason for that. The reason is we have a second method and it is based on difference of the two numbers. So we're talking about 33 and 19 mod 7. Let us find the difference between 33 and 19. Well, the difference is 14. Since 14 is a multiple of 7, right? It is an integer multiple of 7, 7 times 2. We say that 33 and 14 are both giving us the same result, right? So since the difference of the numbers is a multiple of 7, the statement 33 congruent 19 mod 7 is true, correct? So that is how we show it. Now here is example number 4. It is more of a practice with some strategies to learn. Now the question here is find the remainder when the following are divided by 4. So you have to divide by 4 and find the remainder. That is what it is. However, the numbers are very big. 19 to the power of 21. And that is to be divided by 4. Hmm. How are you going to do this? Okay. So we'll apply some strategy here. So first thing is, we could kind of simplify it. What happens when I divide 19 by 4? Well, if I divide 19 by 4, we know 4 times 5 is what? 4 times 5 is 20 and the remainder is minus 1. Remainder could be an integer value, positive or negative. We prefer to use the lower value. Well, I could have written 4 times 4 as 16 and remainder as 3 also. However, minus 1 is of more utility. So, I wrote 19 as minus 1. Do you see that? to the power of 21. Now since we have an odd power 21, odd power means we'll have negative answer. So negative 1 is the solution. Do you get the idea? Perfect. Next number here is 2020 factorial. Now many tests these, this year will involve the year number 2020 and that's why I took it up here. Now what is the remainder? When 2020 factorial is divided by mod 4. Well, some of you may not know. 2020 factorial really means 2020 times 2019, 2018, 2017 and so on. But in short, I can also write this as 2020 times 2019. Well, we could write it like this. Now, if I take the mod 4... Then what happens? Well, mod 4 of 2020 is 0. Since that is 0, then 0 times anything will be 0. And therefore, the answer for this is equal to 0. Does it make sense to you? So it is that simple. And that is how we'll find it. Your answer is also given here. You can go through it. Part C here is, we'll learn find the mod 4 for 401, 402, and 403. How do we figure this out? So we are also learning the properties of modular arithmetic in this particular case while doing these examples, right? So the thing here is that we have to divide by 4. When I divide 401 by 4, I get remainder 1, 402 will give me remainder 2, and 403 will give me remainder 3. Now, the property here is that the remainder of all this mod 4, when you divide by 4, is going to be the product of these three numbers, which is 6. And therefore, what we can write here is all these numbers, their product, mod 4, is 1 times 2 times 3 mod 4. Now, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 is bigger than 4. So you can divide. 
and when you divide you get a remainder of 2 so 2 is your answer do you see that so you get 6 mod 4 and that gives you 2 as your answer since when you divide 6 by 4 what do you get remainder 2 only correct so that is how you can evaluate this so I hope that gives you a good idea let's take some more questions for practice let it be your practice test you can pause the video answer these questions and then look into my suggestions now this time the question here is find the remainder when the following are divided by 50 so we have taken a very big number 50 in this case last time it was relatively smaller number now how do we do this dividing by 50 means you have to find mod 50 of the number given to you 7 cube well this is interesting what is 7 square well 7 square is 49 so when I divide 49 by 50 what do I get well it may go one time and then I get minus 1 do you see that so so basically uh, we have minus 1 as 7 square mod 50 you understand so 7 square mod 50 is minus 1 as shown here so that is a huge property which we can use in this example so 7 cube can be written as what 7 square times 7 now 7 square is 49 and 49 mod 50 is going to be minus 1 minus 1 times 7 will give you a result of minus 7 well you also know minus 7 is as good as writing 43 so we prefer to write answers with positive values so 43 is going to be the answer for the very first question correct now let's take up part b 7 to the power of 100 we just learned that 7 square is very critical for us and 100 means to the power of 50 correct so what we've done here is instead of 7 to the power of 100 we wrote 7 square to the power of 50 which is same right mod 50 now 7 square mod 50 is minus 1 minus 1 with the even power will give us plus 1 as the answer so that is the answer clear now 7 to the power 17 which is an odd number we could write this as 7 to the power of 16 plus 1 right you could write this as 7 to the power of 16 plus 1 which is 7 to the power of 16 times 7 now 16 is 7 square to the power of 8 correct 7 square to the power of 8 is 16 times 7 mod 50 since we know 7 square mod 50 is what it is minus 1 so we'll replace this by minus 1 to the power of 8 it becomes positive 1, 7. And therefore, the answer now is plus 7. Correct? Now, here is the next example, which is we need to find the place value, right? Now, to find the place value, it is easy. You could just find mod 10 and get your answer. Now, based on this, the question here for you is show that 345 is congruent to 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 5, mod 10. So whenever we do mod 10, as I was saying, the value will be what? 5 and 5 for both of them. It makes sense. It is exactly the same answer. And that is how you could do it. Well, and the alternative could be, <clears throat> let's do with definition. 345 is 34 times 10 plus 5. And therefore, mod of 10 will be 5, correct? In this particular case, uh, we can find for a big number 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 5, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7 times 10 minus 5. So 5 again is the remainder, right? Plus 5 will give you the answer. So mod 10 basically gives you the ones place, the units place in both these numbers. Unit place is 5, and therefore this statement is true. Is that clear to you? You could also adopt a second method that is difference of a and b right that is critical so if i do a minus b in this case what do i get i get a number whose last digit is zero well if the last digit is zero dividing by 10 
will lead that particular zero, right? So both will give us <coughs> the same answer. Now this number is integer multiple of 10, correct? The difference is integer multiple of 10. And therefore, we say that the statement is correct, right? So since the difference of the numbers, this 1, 2, 4, 2, 4, 3 is a multiple of 10, statement given to us is true, correct? Well, three more examples to go. Example number seven is to find remainder of 10 times 87 times 183 when it's divided by four. Now these numbers, if we sit down and multiply them and then find the remainder, it is going to be cumbersome. Here is a simpler way. We'll find mod of each four. So 10 mod four, 87 mod four, and one to three mod four will be calculated. Four times two is eight, remainder is two, with dividing by after 187 by four leaves us remainder three, and 123 divided by four leaves the remainder three. So what we can do is we can write the product of remainders as our solution with mod four. Now that is to say 18 mod four, four goes four times to 16 remainder is two, and therefore this is equal to two, correct? Example eight. Now we are looking into exponents. Find the last digit, 567 to the power of nine. So we have to figure out last digit. Last digit really means we want to find the mod 10 of the given number, which is 567 to the power of nine. Now it's a huge number. How do we figure this out? Well, let us look into it. Now, 567 mod 10 is what? First thing, we have to find mod 10 of this number. So 567 mod 10 is number seven itself. Seven is in the ones place, right? Or units place. So whenever you find the mod 10, it is always the units place number, right? Which is seven in this case? Well, seven mod 10 is what? Seven mod 10 is minus three. So when you take away 10 from seven, you get minus three. Minus three is smaller than seven. And therefore, in this example, we'll prefer to put minus three because it is smaller than seven, right? Okay, that means 567 can be replaced by minus three. So we get minus three to the power of nine. Now, power of nine really means power of two times two times two, that is eight, and then times minus three to the power of one. So that gives you power of nine, correct? And what is minus three squared? Minus three squared is nine itself. Now, we're looking for mod of 10. So nine mod of 10 is what? Nine mod 10. Nine mod 10 is minus one. And therefore, nine has been replaced by minus one, but minus one squared is positive, right? So that has been replaced by minus one. Minus one squared is positive. So we get the answer, which is minus three. You get the idea. But minus three should be changed to seven. Perfect. Only then you should leave the answer. Positive numbers are preferred to be given and the answers. The negative numbers, if they are smaller, they help you to find a calculation, right? Here is the last example in which we'll do kind of similar things. However, slightly more tricky. Example is to find uh, find uh, remainder when 3 to the power of 62 is divided by 17. A difficult number to work with, 3 to the power of 62 is divided by 17. A couple of methods can be adopted in this case. What we'll do here is to learn the uh, powers of twos and threes. So first step here is that we need to write 62 as a power of two. That is the first thing we will need to do. Well, 62 can be written as 32, 16, 8, 4, plus 2. If you add them up, you get 62. Now, 3 to the power of 62 could be written as 3 to the power of 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2. That's what I've written here, mod of 17. Now, individually, 3 square is 9, so mod of 17 
with 9 is only 9. If the number is bigger than n, then you multiply and find the remainder. Now next is 3 square square, which is 3 to the power of 4. It is 81 mod 17. And so when you do this, we get the answer as minus 4. So 81 mod 17 is minus 4. Correct? Now well, let's do the next one, which is 3 to the power of 8. Now 3 to the power of 8 is 3 to the power of 4 square. And that is the advantage of going with 2's powers. Do you see that? Each individual now will be the square of previous one. So 3 to the power of 4 square, 3 to the power of 4 is known to us as minus 4. Substitute. Square it. You get 16. And 16 mod 7 is minus 1. You get the idea, right? So this was 16 mod 7, correct? Mod 17. So when you do 16 mod 17, we get minus 1. And that is what is written here, correct? The next one is 3 to the power of 16. We could write this as 3 to the power of 8 whole square. 3 to the power of 8 was calculated at minus 1. Substitute minus 1 and square it. When you do that, you get plus 1. Now thereafter, every power of 1 will have 1 only as the, the mod value, correct? So we have calculated and shown you the calculations. Now it is simple. To all these values, corresponding values can be applied. So 3 to the power of 32 is 1. 3 to the power of 16 is also 1. 3 to the power of 8 is minus 1. 3 to the power of 4 is minus 4. And 3 squared is 9. Multiplying all of them, we get our result, which is 36 mod 17. Now, since 36 is greater than 17, you can divide. Divide 2 times 34, and then you get remainder as 2. That is how it should be done, correct? So, remember one thing. Least, remember, or least remainder, when 3 to the power 62 is divided by 17, it is 2, right? That's what we have written here. So, this is our last example. I hope you understood. How do we work with the mod operator? How do we simplify? our expressions and complete the result. So negative integers are also mod values. They should be used if smaller in number, magnitude. They help in faster calculations. I hope that summarizes it well. So we did cover all the topics mentioned here. Uh, I wish, if you like to uh, learn from me, you can always send an email on this particular account. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. And if you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.